Now that we know about polar coordinates and polar equations, we're going to look at polar graphs. There are many types of polar graphs, but we're only going to be looking at three. We're going to look at limicons, roses, and limniscates. So this lesson is going to be over limicons only, and we'll have other lessons over the other two types of polar graphs. I'm going to go at a regular steady pace through this lesson. I'm going to give you everything that you need to know, but this is probably going to be one where you're going to have to do a lot of pausing and writing uh, to make sure that all of this gets in your notes. I will tell you that this is going to be another set of information where I will give you one of those cheat sheets that has a lot of this information on it. So I'm going to attempt to get this done in one uh, video, so I'll go at a pretty regular pace through this lesson. So in general, limicons have this form r equals a either plus b cosine theta or a minus b cosine theta or r equals a plus b sine theta or a minus b sine theta and what i have here a b and sine or cosine are the secrets to success of graphing these limicons. Uh, sine and cosine play a certain role, that needs to go in your notes, and there are three different kinds of limicons, and that, that's, uh, that comes about from the role of A and B, so that also needs to be in your notes. So they involve R, A, B, and either sine or cosine of theta. We have to pay close attention to the values of A and B and the relationship between them. Is A larger than B? Is A smaller than B? Are they equal? Is A, um, uh, and then we also, we have to pay attention because they tell us a lot about the form that the graph will take. Sine and cosine play a very valuable role too for the graphs of our function. So make sure all of that goes in your notes. So here's the general form. Here's the information we need to know. If we have r equals a plus the cosine of theta, we know automatically that the majority of our graph is going to lie on the positive x-axis. That's the role that plus cosine theta plays. If we have r equals a minus b times the cosine of theta, we know the majority of the graph will lie on the negative x-axis. That's the role that minus cosine of theta plays. If we have r equals a plus the sine of theta, then not surprisingly, the majority of the graph is going to lie on the positive y-axis, and r equals a minus b times the sine of theta, the majority of the graph is going to lie on the negative y-axis. So there's everything you need to know about the role of the plus and minus sign in your equation and either cosine or sine. Now a and b play a specific role on what type of limicon that we have. The first one we're going to look at is limicons that do have a loop in their graph. So if there is a loop in the graph, the relationship between A and B is that A is a value smaller than B. That's independent of where it lies on the positive or negative X and Y axes. And we'll see when we start looking at graphs what I'm talking about. But the value of A being less than the value of B says that our limicon has this little inner loop. So here is, in general, what a limicon looks like that has a loop. And when I say the majority of the graph lies on this end of the axis, this is what I mean. You can see very little of the graph lies on another part of the axes. The majority of the graph is going to lie on one of the axes. I don't know what A and B are in this particular limicon, but I do know that it, it takes this form. It has to be of the form R equals A plus B times the cosine of theta because the majority of the graph does lie on the positive x-axis. I do know that A has to be less than B, whatever A and B are, because there is this inner loop. Now, the value of A and the value of B are going to help us figure out how far that loop goes before it intersects the axis and how far out here the function goes before it intersects the axis. So this is one that we look for generalities 
values of a and b, sine, cosine, plus and minus signs, because all of the forms of these limicons look the same. So we don't have to pick values of theta and put them in there and find corresponding values of r when we're graphing these things. Uh, limicons are very easy to graph because their equations tell us so much about what the graph is going to look like. So it turns out that the distance from the pole or the origin to the end of our loop, that is a. So all we have to do is look at, it's the absolute value of a because it's a distance. All we have to do is look at the value in our equation of what, what is right there, and we know that is the distance from the origin to the end of our loop. We also can find the distance from the end of the loop to the end of the limicon because that is the absolute value of b. We can also find where the limicon is going to intersect the other axes that it intersects because it turns out that's a distance of a as well. So everything we need to know about graphing these limicons is right here in front of us. So let's see how easy it is. Let's graph 1 minus 2 so, uh, sine of theta. It is the case where a is less than b. We are definitely going to have a loop. We are definitely going to be on the negative end of the y-axis. That's where the majority of this graph is going to lie. We know that the distance from the pole to the end of the loop is going to be 1. The distance from the end of the loop to the end of the limicon is going to be 2. And we know that it's going to intersect the x-axis at a distance of 1 to the right and 1 to the left. So let's see if that's what's happening. That is what's happening. There's a distance of 1. So there's A. From the pole to the end of the loop, that's 1. From the pole to the x-axis to the right and to the left is 1. And the distance from the end of the loop to the end of the limicon is indeed 2, which is B. And that's as difficult as these limicons get to graph. Everything we need to know is right there in front of us. So let's look at some more. Let's look at this one. 2 minus 4 times the cosine of theta. A is 2. B is 4. So we are definitely going to have a loop. It is minus cosine of theta. That tells me the vast majority of this graph is going to lie on the negative x-axis. The distance from the pole to the end of the loop should be 2. The distance from the end of the loop to the end of the limicon should be another 4 units. The distance from the pole to where that limicon intersects the y-axis should be a distance of 2. And all of that bears out every bit of it. Now let's look at this one. This is 2 plus 4 times the sine of theta. We should lie on the positive end of the y-axis with the majority of our graph. 2 is less than 4, therefore we should have a loop. That loop from the pole to where it intersects the y-axis should be 2. It should be 2 units along the x-axis, and from the end of the loop to the end of the limicon should be another 4 units. And again, all of that bears out for us. Here is 2 minus 4 times the sine of theta. We should lie on the negative end of the y-axis for the majority of our limicon. 2 is less than 4. We should have a loop. The distance from the pole to the end of the loop should be 2. From the end of the loop to the end of the limicon should be another 4. And this bears out as well. Those distances should also be 2. So graphing limicons uh, with a loop couldn't be easier. What we have to pay attention to is the relationship between A and B. When A is less than B, we're going to have a loop. It turns out when A equals B, they're going to look remarkably the same. All of this that you already have in your notes still bears out for the limicons that are called cardioids. And hopefully you see cardio, cardio in here and think, heart because these do look like a heart. They look exactly like a heart and the only thing that's missing is the loop. So there is no loop in this one at all. So this distance is still A, this distance is still A, and this distance is 2A. I could also say that that distance was still A plus B because B equals A. We normally say it's just 2A, but you can put it in your brain as A plus B. That's what it was on the uh, limicons with a loop. 
we had a distance of A to the end of the loop and a distance of B from the end of the loop to the end of the cardioid. So this is still A plus B, it just turns out A and B are the same value. So when A equals B, everything that we just went over is exactly the same, except there's no loop. So I don't know what A and B are here. I know they're equal, but I know that I have the form some value plus that same value times the cosine of theta because I'm on the positive end of the x-axis. So let's look. Here is 2 times the quantity 1 plus cosine. We distribute the 2, and sure enough, 2 does equal 2. So this is a cardioid. It is a limicon with no loop. I should expect the vast majority of it to lie on the positive end of the x-axis. I should expect there to be no loop and that we intersect the y-axis uh, two units above and two units below the origin, and the distance from the origin to the end of the limicon should be 2 plus 2, or 2a. And sure enough, it is. So graphing these are not difficult. You just have to put all of this information in your head. So here we are, 1 minus 1 cosine, negative end of the x-axis, 1 equals 1, no loop, so we intersect 1 and 1, and we intersect 2 times 1, or 1 plus 1, and that's 2. Here is 1 plus cosine, so positive into the x-axis, no loop, 1, 1, and 2. Here is 1 plus the sine of theta, positive into the y-axis, 1 and 1. There's 1, there's 1, there's 2. R equals 1 minus the sine of theta, so negative into the y-axis, 1 equals 1, so no loop. Distance of 1, distance of 1, distance of 2. See how easy that is? Not difficult at all. So now let's talk about the last type of limicon. It's called a convex limicon. It kind of looks like a circle with a flattened side. And we find it where A is greater than B. So there's all relationships we can have. A less than B, we have a loop. A equal B, we don't have a loop. It looks like a heart. A greater than B, and it looks like a flattened side, right? Doesn't intersect the pole at all. That's what's different about these convex limicons. It doesn't intersect the pole at all, and it has kind of this flattened side where we would normally bend in here and intersect the uh, pole or the origin. This one doesn't. It kind of flattens out there. But again, everything about the other limicons that we learned is still true. I don't know what A and B are. I know A is a greater value than B, but I do know it's going to take the form plus cosine of theta because it's on the positive end of the x-axis. So those are the three types. Now, there we still can find this distance and this distance, and we can still find these distances here. So make sure this is in your notes. It turns out that, sure enough, that's still A. This is still A plus B. So everything that we learned about uh, the limicons with a loop and the cardioids without the loop, still the same. That distance is still A, and from the pole to the end of the limicon is still A plus B. The only thing that's added here is this third little distance right here. The distance from where it intersects the other part of the major axis and the pole that's found by A minus B. So you can see now, after looking at all these limicons, how important it is for us to recognize the relationship between A and B and the plus or minus and the sine or cosine. That is, that is key to us being able to graph these um, by hand. So here we are. Here A is 6, B is 3, 6 is greater than 3, so I should expect a flattened side. And I have plus cosine theta on both of them, so I should expect both of them uh, to lie, uh, the majority of it lie on the positive end of the x-axis. Uh, here, this is a distance of uh, A, and this is, nope, that's not a distance of A. Uh, that's a distance of A minus... B. No, it is. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Look at your tick marks. Sorry. Sorry. That's a distance of A. I just saw three tick marks. I was like, wait a minute. No, that's a distance of six. They just have two, four, six. This is a distance of six. This is a distance of six plus three. That's nine. This is a distance of six minus three. That's three. So sorry about the confusion. Same thing here. This is six plus two. So six, six, six plus two is eight. 6 minus 2 is 4. 
So that's it. That's how we're going to graph these limicons. So come to class next time and we'll practice all three types of limicons.